I'm going to share an activity that I do with my students when I'm teaching GS laws. I want the students to be able to kind of think through things. And one of our favorite activities is to go outside and launch a hot air balloon. Well, it always launches better in February than it does in June. All right, so I talk to the kids about the density of air. And I know that a lot of students do not understand why some things sink and why some things float. So they have to understand Archimedes' principle for this, that all objects that are suspended in a fluid, gas or liquid, are buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So in other words, in order for that hot air balloon to lift, we have got to make sure that the volume of the balloon is large enough that it will displace its own mass of air, its own weight in air. And that's a misconception or a, something that even graduate students have trouble understanding. There was some research done at Purdue University with the graduate students. They didn't understand it. So as a prelude to this, one of the things I do is have them actually calculate the density of air using Archimedes' principle. So it's very simple to do. We're going to take a balloon, and we're going to fill it with dry ice, and then we're going to record the mass loss as the dry ice sublimes and the balloon inflates. I usually put a rubber stopper inside the balloon so that it stays on the balance. So I've got a little rubber stopper in my balloon here. The other thing I do is I inflate the balloon several times to make it easier. So I just, I just do that a couple of times before I get going. And use a powder funnel because it has a bigger hole. And you just want to put that over the mouth of the balloon to get your dry ice in there. Now, our local grocery store now sells dry ice, so it isn't hard to come by dry ice. Make sure when you handle it that you always wear gloves and you want to demonstrate for the students that it's not safe to handle this with your bare hands. I've got some dry ice that we picked up yesterday afternoon, and we just put it in a chest with, in a paper bag. I'm going to take this piece of dry ice, and I'm going to, with a hammer, break it up into little pieces so that I can get it in. So, yeah, the big pieces aren't going very well. And let's see what else I can do. quite a bit of dry ice in there. The larger the volume difference I can get in the balloon, the better my data is going to be, and that's the reason why I'm putting so much dry ice in the balloon. Okay. I'm obviously not going to be able to tie the balloon wearing those gloves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the balloon on the balance and I'm going to tear it to zero as soon as I get it on here. Okay, so I'm just going to tear that balloon to zero and observe what happens as my balloon inflates. I start getting negative readings on the balance. So as that dry ice sublimes, the kids are thinking, oh, why is she getting negative readings? Oh, she just told us Archimedes' principle. So the more air that's displaced here, the greater the mass of that air that was displaced, and the buoyancy factor is caused by the force from the displaced air 
coming back in again. Um, then we can have a little discussion about how the density of air changes with temperature. I have a chart that I use in the room. And you notice that the density of air will depend on the barometric pressure as well as the temperature. So we're going to have to do a reading of the temperature in the room before we start this, or I usually just have it on the board that I've measured it and of the barometric pressure. So as my balloon gets bigger and bigger, I will come over here and say, well, what else do I need to know? Well, in order to calculate density, I need mass and I need volume, right? Well, I'm assuming that this balloon is perfectly spherical so that if I measure the circumference of the balloon, I can calculate the volume of gas in the balloon. For mass, if I want to know what mass that air or the, of the displaced air is, it will be the same as the apparent mass loss as this balloon's inflating. Okay? So I need to measure the circumference and I need to record the mass loss. And I need to do this pretty quickly. Once I take it off of the balance, I'm going to record that and I'm going to quickly determine the circumference of my balloon. All right, so at this point I have a mass loss of 1.96 grams. And I've never had that one happen before. <laughs> Excuse us. Let's try the mass loss real quick. 1.96 grams, and the circumference here is 46.8 centimeters. All right, so let's go over to the board and do these calculations. The circumference is equal to 2 pi r, okay? And the circumference of this was 46.8 centimeters. So if I divide that by 2 pi, I'm going to get r. And the answer I get for this is 7.45 centimeters is the radius of my balloon. All right. Now, I need to find the volume. The formula for volume is volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the volume of the balloon times our radius cubed, the volume is going to be 1733 cubic centimeters. All right. So density, remember, was mass divided by volume. And the mass loss, 1.96 grams per 1733 cubic centimeters gives me a density right now of 0 0.001131 grams per cubic centimeter. The pressure is 740 millimeters of mercury and the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. So if I go over to my chart, I can find, and this is a CRC table, but at 24 degrees and 74 uh, centimeters, which is 740 millimeters, my density of air here is going to be 0 0.001157. Okay, they just don't bother putting those in the tables. So, what's my percent error? Well, my percent error is going to be what I should have gotten, 0 0.001157. Oh, 0.01157, excuse me, 
minus 0 0.00113 divided by 0 0.001157 times 100 or 2.3 percent error. Now you may not get anywhere near close that. Obviously I was using data I'd collected at another time because it takes a while to go through the calculations. But I have gotten good results with it and it opens up the discussion with the students of why that measurement had some assumptions you know that we were making in terms of the balloon being perfectly spherical and you got to take the mass of the balloon and then measure the circumference pretty quickly. So there are a number of sources of error in it and I don't mind sometimes if the results have a bigger variance than you know you might like. I mean it's nice if you get a 2% error but even if I have like a 10% error on this it's not it's not the end of the world. We've had the discussion and we've discussed all the things that could have gone wrong like the lid lifting up when you go to read the ballots. So the next activity I would do with my students is we would take a hot air balloon and then we would calculate the hover temperature that it would need for the balloon to just balance. Thank you. <laughs>